So it's like you're saying, okay, you took away your favorite news source and now you're going to read less news. So then we can say, well, what's the impact on different types of outlets? So there's three different kinds of outlets. We look at the top five outlets in Spain, the middle 15, and the, the ones that are ranked lower than 20 in size. And we can look at what, what happens to the causal effect, using this group as a control group, on their news consumption from shutting down Google News. And so what we see is for the top five outlets, they actually get more page views. So that when we take away Google News, people substitute to other top outlets. So the top outlets, like the Wall Street Journal complaining that Google News steals their users, is borne out in the data. They do. And so they, if you believe that you would like the New York Times and the Washington Post and so on to have more reporters investing in news, then you might think Google News is bad for them. And it's bad, for, therefore, for the amount of investigative journalism we get from top websites. On the other hand, if you look at the very bottom, there's a, a negative 10% effect. So the small news outlets lose traffic when Google News goes away. So for small outlets, you're not going to bookmark them. You don't really know about them. The search costs are high. It's more expensive for you to go look than your expected benefit. So you don't go. So Google News helps you find the small outlets. If you think the small outlets are mostly copying the big outlets, you might think that that's a, that it's good that they, that it's, it's a, it's a, the Google News is going away is actually a, a good thing because they were just copying. They weren't actually doing R&D. If you think that the small outlets are providing a diverse perspective, that they are giving media diversity, if you think these small outlets are doing a social service, then Google News going away would be bad.